today is 10-21-2015 at 6.26 a.m. in the morning on a Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Yep. Well, I'm here to talk about um, Donald Trump again. Man, I can't believe the crowds this guy has. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands. We're talking sporter region type of people, man. A lot of people. Why? Why? Why do you think that is? Well, looks to me like the American people are starting to wise up. I mean, shit. After a Bush administration, after Clinton, pff, come on. And after all these administrations, we're we're nineteen trillion dollars in debt. Nineteen trillion. God, do you know? Do you even know how much that is? Nineteen trillion. <laughs> I think it has 17 zeros behind 19, I think. 17 zeros. Wow. And Donald Trump won. Man, that's crazy. I mean, that's crazy. If we get 21 trillion, even him, even Donald Trump won't even be able to pull us out of it. And we just about to just start talking Chinese because um, China will come over and just, you know, step in and we'll be communists. And um, I know you don't want that to happen. I mean, no matter how stupid and don't know what you're doing type of person you are, I know you don't want that to happen. And um, that's why the United States is uh, the United States. You know, uh, we're not a communist rule. And we don't want to be. Many of thousands of lives, many vets have lost their life prevent that. <laughs> uh, so that's like the, the worst case scenario is for China is for China to step in and take over the United States, which they do on a lot of land of the United States, which that should be illegal. I think that should be illegal, not not like Arnold Schwarzenegger being born in Austria, not being able to run. What what the, what is that shit? That, that, that constitutional thing there shouldn't be in the Constitution. It should have never been in the Constitution because that's saying, okay, the United, people, United States people are stupid and they don't know what they're doing. That's what, they're, that's what they were saying back when they wrote the Constitution right off the bat. That's what, that's what the, our forefathers are saying. The United States are stupid and they don't know what they're doing, so we better put this in our Constitution saying that no one outside the United States can run for president. Why? You know? Who cares? You know, let's say 10 people outside, let's say uh, the British. That, that's the reason why we put it in the Constitution. Well, that's the reason why our forefathers, because they were kind of, they were kind of, they were stupid. And they didn't know what they are doing. Our forefathers were. Um, because by putting that in the Constitution, that you must be born in the United States to run for president. That's, that's kind of a slap in the United States' face. You know, that's kind of a slap in the United States' person's face. Because now the forefathers, the forefathers are admitting to the United States people that we would be stupid enough to all vote for a British, Britisher when we wouldn't. So it's a stupid, it's a stupid thing in the United States. I mean, the our Constitution, that part of it, where you have to be born in the United States, is stupid, and it doesn't know what it's doing. I mean, it doesn't know what it's doing. And it should be fired and stricken from the book. I mean, what, why? It's saying, you as a United States person don't know what you're doing, so we're going to put this in the Constitution saying that you can't do that anyway, run, run for president if you're born outside the United States. Can't do that anyway, because this stupid person and don't know what he's doing in the United States will vote for you. And that's the reason why they put it in the Constitution. And so, you know, the British are coming. The British are coming, you know. That's the reason that is in the Constitution. So that we could not, you know, could not have a Britisher or someone from British run for president or be president. So, that was just stupid in the first place. And I'm talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger here because, I mean, if you talk uh, America, you're, you're talking Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. He's more American than anybody that I know of. Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
and he can't even run for president because he knows if he ran and he, you know that constitution was never in the book you know that constitutional thing saying you can't run for president at, um, if you're not born in the United States well Arnold was born in Austria he had a lot of, a lot of other brothers like I don't, I don't know like 14 I think there's like 14 brothers and sisters he has and um uh, he came to the United States to win the, to win the Mr. Olympia, and he did win the Mr. Olympia seven straight or seven times in a row. I, I think it's seven straight times in a row, man. No one held that title. I think someone does now, but I mean they they they've held it for uh, seven straight times or seven times. But um, at that point, he set the record. He set the bar. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He set the bar. <laughs> and he goes to Hollywood. He goes to Hollywood. He sets the bar there. He's the most paid actor. Arnold Schwarzenegger was. I don't know if he still is. You know, um, but he was. He set the bar there. He went to Hollywood. And all the meanwhile, when he's going to compete for um, bodybuilding as Mr. Olympia, um, go to go to um, Hollywood and become a, uh, the best actor ever and the most paid actor. All the meanwhile, his dad, his mom, his sisters, brothers, uh, everyone around him, everyone who knew his name, saying, there's no way in hell you're going to do that. There's no way in hell you're going to win Mr. Olympia. You know, you're not even going to win Mr. Olympia. You know, Mr. Olympia, he's not even going to win it. That's what his mother and dad is saying. That's what his, his siblings are saying. That's what everybody that knows Arnold Schwarzenegger was saying. He won it seven times. <laughs> I mean, the only reason he didn't win it again is because he got tired of winning all the time. Being, I mean, that's the only reason why he didn't do it again. Yeah, he could have done it again. He wanted to even and better himself. He kept, he kept wanting to better himself. So he goes to Hollywood, right? Now, now they're saying, oh, your name's too long. You know, even the Hollywood people are saying this. The Hollywood people are just going to do this movie, right? Oh, your name's too long, so we're going to call you a... Strong, strong man or something stupid, something stupid to shorten his name up, right? From Arnold Schwarzenegger. Shit, you, I mean, if I was a star, I'd want my name long. More lights, you know, more lights, right? While well, they're going, these are people who's hiring Arnold Schwarzenegger to be an actor. Saying, oh, no way, you can't have that big old long name. No one, no one know, know how to spell it, no one know how to say it. Who doesn't know Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Uh, man, I mean, I don't know how to spell it, but, um, but I know where to get it, get it on the line, you know, you can, you can, okay, but, um, shit, then he goes, then he goes, he's not really done acting, but, you know, he's putting it off to the side, right, and he's, he's hit the top level, he's, he's the most paid actor in Hollywood, and his family, his mom and dad, his, his siblings, his, everybody knows Arnold saying, no way in hell are you going to do that. You're not even going to become an actor, let alone be the top of the line of actor, being the most paid actor. Huh. No way. Who are you? No, that's what the family's saying. Then he goes, then he goes to run for governor. Oh, man. There ain't no way you're going to, and the most richest, the most well-known Hollywood state in the union uh, California, there's no way in hell you're going to be governor there. No way. And they, they say it right up in, even when he's running there, they say, oh, I can't believe it. We got to check the, you know, that's bullshit. This is mom and dad saying, siblings, everybody knows who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. Said, no, no way in hell you're going to be governor of, of a, of especially California. <laughs> Shit. There's no way, you know, they laughed at him. Come on. What's this guy got to do, man? What does Arnold Schwarzenegger got to do? God, if I had any any person on this earth that walks on this earth, any person that walks on this earth as a role model for a kid or for an adult, even an adult or, you know, some drug he wants to get off drugs, Arnold, Arnold's the one, man. There's, there's, there's four people I want to meet and two of them are dead. And that's, uh, I'll just tell you, Michael Jackson and Bruce Lee. Why? Because they were also the top of their, what they did. 
Michael Jackson was superstar of all superstar of pop and rock and roll. He's got the best music ever. Okay, Michael Jackson. He was black, man. I mean, you couldn't get no, you couldn't get in more of a bad position than Mike, Michael Jackson came from. Come from a two-bedroom house in uh, Gary, Indiana. And what's he got? Flying five sisters and brother? Came from a two-bedroom house. In a dirt poor um, city, Gary, Indiana. Look at him now. Look how many mansions he has. I mean, he's got he's got a um what, like a fair? He's got like a fair, you know, or uh, um I don't know where you got like you know, all the all the stuff, the rides and stuff and and uh, you know, uh, all the different kinds of food you get at like a um what do you call it, circus. Um, he's got the animals. Man, you can't do I mean that's that's another person, Michael Jackson. And all that shit they said about him, about the, see they tried to bring him down. From, you know, superstar, superstar status, try to bring him down. And, um, uh, they did bring him down, but not to their level, thank God. But, um, uh, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, man. Bruce Lee is about my height. I'm about five foot four. And he, he was like 140 pounds, Bruce Lee. He was like about 140 pounds. He, he could hit uh, a heavy bag, you know, like uh, over 300 pound bag full of sand. And he said he had to reinforce the insides of the bag. So when he hit it with his fist or kicked, you know, kicked it with his feet, that he wouldn't put his fist through the bag or his, his foot through the bag. Okay, so he put steel on the inside. So when it hit the bag, it hit the steel and would squish the sand. So, you know, he had a special bag. And he's so lightly and fast because of, of his regime, you know, his regime of um, making himself better as a, um, I mean, you can't get any better than Bruce Lee than, uh, um, you can't get any better than Bruce Lee as far as martial arts go and fighting and defending. You can't get any better than Bruce Lee. There's no one on earth that's better than Bruce Lee and never was. He never lost a fight. Bruce Lee never lost a fight. No matter how big, three, four hundred pound guy he's going against, he never lost a fight. Bruce Lee didn't. They had, they had, they had, to, they had to slow down the camera so that you could see what he was doing. He did it so damn quick, you know, all the techniques he did with his feet and his hands. He had to slow down the camera. This was the superstar of all superstars as far as the martial arts community goes. Bruce Lee. Can I be as near Bruce Lee? That's what it was. Can I be near Bruce Lee? You know, as good as he is. Like Chuck Norris. You know, Chuck Norris is way too slow. Even though, even in his prime, Chuck Norris is way too slow for Bruce Lee. And... And uh, Bruce Lee had a more powerful hit, too. I mean, you know, any, any punch or kick he threw, he threw it as it's going to be his last kick or his punch. And he had what's known as a one-inch punch where he holds, holds his fist next to your chest, right, by one inch. And bam, like that, right? And he'd put a chair behind you, you know, because you're going to, you know, you're going to fall. You're going to be stunned and then fall. You're going to say, oh, what just happened? Bam, you're going to fall, okay? Bruce Lee. Those are the two reasons why I want to watch. I want. I wanted to meet Bruce Lee and and uh, Michael Jackson because they're 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 superstars. They're all both of them are superstars. Okay. And um, another person is Arnold Schwarzenegger, like I've already discussed about Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, with with his bodybuilding, you know, he's the best in the world. Seven time best, not just once, not just twice, not just three. I mean, how many times this guy gotta be, you know, Mr. Olympia to prove that he is the best and the top of the line and the superstar of all superstars? 
as far as bodybuilding goes. Okay. Okay, let's just drop that one. He went to Hollywood. Now he's a superstar of all superstars of Hollywood. He's the top of the line. Top of the line. Most paid actor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Look it up. Don't take my word for any anything I say, don't take my word for it. Just look it up on it on your internet. Just look it up there. Look it up on your books, whatever, and go library. Go to the internet. Go whatever. And what I'm telling you is, is a fact. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the top top paid actor in Hollywood. And probably still is. Okay, so yeah, and then the fourth person I want to meet is well, actually, the, in order, in order, I want to meet, I want to meet um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and uh, then Donald Trump, and then Michael Jackson, and then Bruce Lee. But I can't meet meet the last two because they're dead. But I can make a cardboard figure of them, <laughs> and and have Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, and Donald Trump. Hold one up, you know. Maybe Donald Trump, you know, with uh, Michael Jackson, because I think they I think Michael, J or Donald Trump had a lot to do with Michael Jackson. I think. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm not sure on that one though. But um, and uh, of course Arnold Schwarzenegger, do we? But um, I think I'd have uh, I'd have uh, uh, I'd have like Arnold Schwarzenegger, or I mean, um, I'd have um. <laughs> I'd have Donald Trump hold um, Michael Jackson and and have uh, have uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger hold uh, Bruce Lee because Bruce Lee and Arnold Schwarzenegger have quite a bit in common as far as physical, you know, being being strong and maybe not so so quick, but because he's a big dude. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, but uh, and when you're a big dude, you got telegraphed. You got telegraph punches and kicks whenever you're whenever you're upsized, and uh, that's why the little man like like um, you know Bruce Lee, which is five foot four, I believe, and uh, that's why he had the advantage when he was inside, and the bigger dude had the advantage on the outside because it takes the bigger dude a longer telegraph punch, a telegraph which is longer punch where Bruce Lee can go in there, you know, do little, little punches and do, it's all over with, you know. Once he's inside, <laughs> and that's one thing you don't want to do is that Bruce Lee inside, because that's where he's gonna kill you. But anyway, I I, I took I took kung fu for two uh, it was like two years. Uh, Okinawan karate, we call it Okinawan karate kung fu, uh, or waicharu waicharu, Okinawan karate or kung fu. That's what you call my style. I was, in, I was in it for two years, so I know what I'm doing when I'm blocking and cook, kicking him. I know, I know what I'm doing, but uh, and I love the UFC. You know, and the UFC has a lot of benefits to it because, and it's not all bad, you know, because they're, they're, you know, they're violent against each other, yeah. But see, what, you know, you can learn from that. Say you're out on the street and you watch the UFC. The stuff in the UFC works. The stuff in the WWE or whatever you call it now, big time wrestling or you know the wrestling, that's all fake. There's nothing really you can use there other than the actual, uh, the actual um, submission holds. Maybe you can maybe use those, but you can use everything. Everything you watch on the UFC, you can use on the street. Everything. So. Um, you know, so that, that, you know, to protect yourself, you know, because they, they got to protect each other, right? So they ain't getting, uh, you know, straight in blows, because that's the m most important thing. Not to get a straight in blow, but a glancing blow. So if I block one, it comes over my block and hits me, then it's not going to be as powerful as a straight in blow. You get a couple straight in blows and it's over. <laughs> I mean, I'm a fresh, fresh person. Now, when you get later on in the match, you're not as fresh and not as strong and not as quick. So straight in blows don't matter so much. But but the first, uh, I say, uh, first five minutes in, a, in a, less than five minutes in a street fight is over. So you know, in the first you know three minutes or so. Uh, after that, then you don't have to worry about so much as a straight in blow. It really depends on the condition of your opponent. If he's really conditioned, you would. You know, but um, 
you're still going to not want to be a, a straight in punch, even though they are a little weaker. So whatever. Um, the reason I'm doing this video, though, is to tell you that those are the four people um, that I would love to meet, um, although two of them are dead. Even Donald Trump, if he, if he didn't win president, I still want to meet this guy. Why? Because, man, he's accomplished so much, it's not even funny. He's got 12, he's got a dozen, he's got a dozen um, golf courses, got a dozen golf courses. He's got, I don't know how many casinos. He's got, um, what is it, uh, he's got a bunch of high-rises, and these are big high-rises that he took from dirt, like, you know, the United States is right now, their, their economy is dirt. He took, it, he took it from, you know, very dirty to very clean, where movie stars want to pay him, you know, thousands of dollars to stay there. And these are, these are high-rises that even a bum would want to stay there. I mean, even a bum that don't have nothing. Doesn't want to stay there because of, because of the uh, the area and and you know it's rat infested. It's it's broken out windows. It's this is that. It's ready to fall down. And Donald Trump buys it, seeing seeing potential, and he makes it golden. He makes it golden like he sees the United States. He sees the United States. Oh man, you know because he lived in the United States. He hadn't just seen it. He's lived in the United States since birth. He's got a real birth certificate, not a made-up one, okay? Um, and, I'm, and I'm talking about Obama here. Um, I believe it, it was made up. What's, what's, what's going to be so hard about making up a, you know, when you're talking about high statue people, what's going to be so hard about making that up? But that's neither here nor, nor there. He's already been, and you, you guys, as the monkeys, as the monkeys you are, re-elected him for another four years. Now look at our economy. It was, it was bad then. Now it's even worse. And you as the, we the people, you, not me, I'd never vote for um, Obama. I would never would have. There's no way in hell. I would have rather had McC McCain in there. But, um. I was kind of disappointed when McCain didn't get in there, but and when he first ran, when Obama first ran, because I, I, McCain deserved that. And you, as the monkeys you are in the United States, go in there and start pushing and pulling levers and not really knowing what you're doing and stupid and don't know what you're doing, and you put him in there for another four years. Now look at the economy. China's about ready to step in. What's it going to take? China to step in? And I mean, uh, you're a monkey. You guys are monkeys that voted voted uh, Obama in. You're monkeys. And another Clinton. Even I don't see why this race isn't just 100% Donald Trump. I, I see. I don't. I don't understand that. I, I really don't. If you ever listen to one, any anyone anyone uh, pick pick a pick a uh, speech that. Uh, uh, that Donald Trump's done. Just pick one. Anyone. You're gonna learn about history, for one thing, and you're gonna learn you're gonna learn that he's the best candidate because of his past history of being a billionaire, billionaire. And uh, he's stepping down. He's not he's not stepping up like everybody else running. All the other twenty candidates are stepping up in the world if they become president. And who pays for it? Us. <laughs> Us. Us, the United States, are going to pay for it. And anybody else gets in there other than Donald Trump, it's over. I mean, it's probably not going to be able to be recoverable. Our, our, our economy probably is never going to be able to be recoverable unless we go into a major world war. And maybe then, you know, after we beat the shit out of everybody that, that we owe, then maybe, you know, if you want to do it the military way. Donald Trump don't want to do it the military way. Um... But he wants to have us the strongest military ever, just so that they'll look at that and say, oh, we don't want to mess with the United States, so we have, we'll, we'll negotiate now. We'll negotiate. Okay, right now, <laughs> why are we? We've got a weak military. We've got a weak economy. we got people, you know, hundreds of thousands of people out of work. See, I haven't worked for, I haven't had a state job since 2005. That was the last time I had a state job. And since 2005 to this day, I've only worked. Uh, for 
about, uh, actually about six months, I think, total. That's why I worked. Six months total. From 2005 to 2015. Right now, i got to have a job, otherwise I'm going to go back down to mission. Um, I'm not stupid, and I know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not stupid. But, uh, I mean, I held a job that paid, you know, $17 an hour plus $6 out of profit sharing and made almost $50,000 my last job. That was my highest paid job I ever had. I was a material handler. I used to, I used to um, load complete bleacher systems, you know, at sporting events, the things you pull out like this and spectator seating. I made almost $50,000. And that was back in 2005. And that was the last year I worked. And, um... Uh, so, um, Donald Trump is the only person running that's even qualified to be president. Shit. I don't even want to talk about the other ones. I don't want to talk about Clinton. I, don't want to, I ain't going to say her first name because I, I, I don't think she deserves to be called her first name. I really don't. She's a liar. Um, she's the worst Secretary of State ever. We've already given both Clintons a chance. We, we, we impeached Bill Clinton. The the um, the um, Senate. He was impeached by the Senate on two counts, like I said in my last video. I don't want to have to keep saying that. You just gotta look it up, see what, what the two charges were, and they're proven. Why would you Why would you give another Clinton a chance? I don't. You gave them both a chance already. We both we didn't like either one of them. But you guys were monkeys again there. He he ran for four eight years. But by the time the eight years came up, we wanted to impeach the man. Oh well. What I say is, at least give Donald Trump a chance. Give him at least four. Don't give him four years. Don't give him another four years if you don't like him. Shit, everybody loves the man. Shit, he gets thousands and thousands of people come to all his speeches. He's he's a military man. He he was he he started he started military school when he was thirteen. So what better military person would you want in there? An educated one like him from from age 13? He knows the military inside and out. He knows a lot of military people. He knows a lot of vets. He's going to take care of the vets. He's going he's gonna to make the Social Security better. Mark my word. Give him four years. Just give him four years. Give the man a chance. After four years, if he's not all I say he is, don't vote for him. All I'm saying is give the man a chance. That's all I'm saying. And I think he's going to win by the landslide because there's not enough monkeys out there that's going to stay monkeys not knowing what the hell is going on and knowing what the hell is going on. And they're not going to be stupid and not knowing what they're doing. And they're going to they're gonna vote for him. I think he's going to win it by a landslide. It's not going to be a... It's not, even though there's a slight chance, you know, but uh, I don't think I don't think he's, I don't think he's not gonna win it. I think he's gonna win it by landslide. I don't even think it's gonna be close. It's gonna, once, once the polls, once we start voting, and everybody's saying, "Oh, Donald Trump is here," and you know the other candidates are here, it's gonna be all Donald Trump all the way once that happens, because it's gonna be a landslide. And I'm praying. I'm praying. That it is going to be a landslide. Because just think about it. What his track record is, and everybody else's track record put together. Okay, everybody else's track record put together, put it, do that. Then go to the real man, Donald Trump, okay? And just just try, just go his track record. Yeah, he filed bankruptcy, but he didn't never file personal bankruptcy. He, he did a business transaction, and it went sour. And the best way to get out of that is by bankruptcy. And that's not a personal bankruptcy. He never even came close to filing personal bankruptcy. Um, that was just a bit, that was just a very smart decision on his part to file business bankruptcy. Oh man. But um, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is give Donald Trump a chance. like that song 
You know, give peace a chance. It's like that song, give peace a chance. All I'm saying is give Donald Trump a chance that he deserves. That's all I'm saying. Hope you vote for him.